Hi there, I'm Jenny Wright, and I want to welcome you to this episode of List Build and Lead. This is episode number 20, and we're talking about the 10 different ways that you can become more successful and actually make it more easy for you to become successful. So the 10 things I want to share with you today are going to help you in terms of how to allow yourself to do better in your business in 2020. So this recording, this show is coming out right after New Year, so Happy New Year! It's 2020. Um, I'm really excited that this is the new year. I have been planning uh, so much lately, and my schedule has been kind of crazy, um, and it's been kind of nuts, but I've been really, really grateful because there's a lot of stuff that's been coming up that's going to be really, really good. There's been some huge, huge changes that are happening. Um, massive transition in our business and my business, what I'm doing. I'm really, really excited about it. So, um, and what I want to let you know is, is that today's episode is actually sponsored by my new workshop that is happening in just about a week. It's happening on January the 7th. It's called Turning Leads into Paying Clients, How to Use Email Marketing Tools to Convert Faster. So I'm going to be showing you along with Haley Gray, who is the creator and owner of Women's Entrepreneur Network. It's a huge Facebook group of over 63,000 women and some really cool men. Uh, and we're going to be presenting this workshop to you on how to use tools that are actually going to help take people from being just a lead into a client. Now, these are email marketing tools. These are free tools, low cost tools, some strategies and some tips. We're going to blow you away with all this stuff. It's about two and a half hours and it's super, super affordable. It's going to be a $37 masterclass, two and a half hours with two experts in list building and in email marketing and lead generation. It's going to blow your minds completely. And the link to check it out is going to be right under this video. So check it out. It's called turning leads into paying clients, how to use email marketing tools to convert faster. And that's happening on January the 7th. And if you miss it, if you're not able to be there, but you still want that training, you can purchase the training for $37 and I'll make sure that you get it and you can enjoy it at your absolute leisure. Okay, so let's dive into today's content. I'm really excited about it. First though, I wanted to give a shout out to um, a gentleman that was in my recent challenge, my five day challenge that took place in mid-December. It was called the Level Up List Build Challenge. This was the most successful challenge that I have hosted so far in my business. It was bananas, it was awesome. Over 400 people joined the challenge from organic marketing that I did and really dove into some great, great content. We've still got people consuming it now, even in the new year, um, people still want it. So don't worry, I will be running it again for sure. So this shout out is to Joe Di Chiara. Do, Joe is actually um, in the challenge and he had to say this, which was really, really cool. And this, I, I want to say this because it really counts. It really means something when it comes to list building. This is somebody that gets it. Um, and I highly recommend that you kind of listen to these words. So he says, so one very important thing I've learned through this challenge is that all paths lead to my list. The intention of my group is to build my list. The purpose of being on LinkedIn is to build my list. When I speak or do an event, I need a mechanism to build my list. To do that, I need to give people a reason to be on my list. It's really pretty simple. I can't believe it took me this long to get it. Business gets confusing and overly complicated sometimes. And no matter how long you've been doing this, we all need direction. And this challenge got me right on track. Thank you, Jenny Wright. So thank you, Joe. That was a really amazing quote. Uh, I appreciate you letting me use it. And um, I think it was absolutely fabulous that you got that out of the challenge. Okay, so let's talk about the different ways, the 10 different ways that we're gonna make it easier for you guys to be successful, to achieve success, which is what we all want. And this doesn't matter where you are in your business, it doesn't matter at all. It's just how you apply it, okay? So step one, and I'm speaking right to you when I say this, you are way too hard on yourself, okay? You are way, way too hard on yourself. So how you react to good things and bad things makes a difference in your business. 
And when you're really hard on yourself, when you allow yourself to get down in the dumps because something has happened that you know has put you back a step or caused some sort of an issue in your business, how you really dig into yourself and you're mean to yourself and you say stuff to yourself, those things matter. You can actually derail all of your potential success, all your future success, all the things that have been happening and going in the right direction of success by being so down on yourself. I absolutely have this problem. And I used to get into the sort of like the pity party, right? Oh, woe is me, the world's against me, these kinds of things. And sometimes it would take me a couple of days to get out of it, but then I would get out of it and be like, okay, you know, I'd get reared up and be like, screw this. I'm not gonna let this get me down. And then I'd be like all raring to go, right? Does that sound familiar? <laughs> but I needed to find a way to shorten the I'm so hard on myself portion because it was doing nothing for me, nothing for my business, nothing for everything going on in my life to be hard on myself for days and days and days. So give yourself the permission to stop being so hard on yourself and say, look, whatever I just did, whatever just happened sucked, it really, really sucked. And I'm going to go and I'm going to take a break. I'm going to walk away from the computer and I'm going to go sit and I'm going to read a book, have a cup of tea, go have lunch with a friend, watch Netflix, have a nap, pet your cat, go hang out with your kid, hang out with your spouse, whatever it is that sort of re-energizes you and gives you that break so that you can come back and get at it. All right. So stop being so hard on yourself. Find a way to mitigate that two day, three day, four day thing where it takes you that long to kind of regroup and allow yourself a couple hours, an afternoon, but then get back at it. Okay. So you're way too hard on yourself. Let's show you how not to be. Okay. Number two, I want you to focus on the one task, not the many tasks, just the one task and the one right after that, not the 25 other tasks that you need to get done. That's going to get you to your end result. Okay. So as an example, I have at the time of this recording, I have a chat, uh, sorry, a workshop coming up on January 7th, a workshop coming up on February 18th. I have a major list build that's being planned and going to launch on April the 20th. I have a brand new digital course launching on February 3rd with the cart opening on January 6th and closing on January 31st. There are hundreds, no joke, hundreds of tasks associated with those four big projects. And those are just my projects. Those aren't the client projects that I have built into my ecosystem that I have to do and complete for clients. Okay. So I am very scheduled. I am very tight with my time and I do it on purpose. I love what I do. I mean, I love it and I like being this busy, but I don't focus on a hundred tasks. I focus on the one and the one right after, and I will then tackle the next one. And I do them in sequence to make sure that I don't get overwhelmed. Because if I think about the 200 or whatever tasks I have between now and April 20th, the launch of my next, my next big list build, I'll go nuts and you'll go nuts too. And overwhelm is a big deal. Like I felt overwhelmed this morning. I got up this morning, I looked at my tasks, um, you know, at the time of this recording, I'm recording this on a weekend. I didn't want to get into that mode this morning, but I looked at my tasks and was like, oh my gosh, there's a lot going on here. My good friend, Allison reached out, Hey, how's it going? And I said, I'm feeling overwhelmed. And then I had to snap myself out of it and say, you know what? I'm not overwhelmed. I'm focusing on the one thing, record this show. Then I'm going to focus on the next task. I'm going live tonight in one of my Facebook groups. And then what's my next task? I'm going to be working on the opt-in page for one of my clients for a five-day challenge. What's the next thing? Okay, next, 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 and next. And that's it. That's all you have to do. So it'll stop you from getting overwhelmed. Hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully that was helpful. Number three, find the way to get and stay organized that's, that works for you, then stick with it. So here's an example. I love pen and paper. And is this is my reach. I'm just going to grab it my niece bought me this for Christmas and it's a planner for 2020. So it's a great little planner. It's got all the calendar dates marked out and stuff like that. And I definitely am going to use this. Thank you, Mel, for my planner for 2020. Um, however, 
it's not enough to keep me organized. So I use a lot of free products and software to make me organized. One is I use Asana. In Asana, I can make task lists and I can assign them to people on my team if I need to, or for myself or for a client. Sometimes I share an Asana um, project with a client and we'll do all our tasks in there. I also use Slack. Slack is a great communication tool. I try and stay off of social media um, DMing because if I'm DMing with a client through social media, I get caught up in the whirlwind, I check out Facebook too much, I'm on Instagram too much, and then I'm not as effective as I wanna be, right? So I try and stay off social media in that respect as much as possible for communication, which is why I move clients, as soon as they're signed as a client, I move them into a different program called Slack. Some of my clients use Basecamp, so I'll work with them on Basecamp. But my clients tend to be in Slack with me, and I'm very, very regimented about that so that I'm not on social media because if I am, the messages are insane. Um, I am not an email person. I loathe checking email threads for information, so I don't do it. So clients, I, I tell them I'm not an email person. I put everything into a Dropbox or put everything into a Google Drive and then hit me up on Slack and let me know it's there. That's my way of being organized. I do write a list at the end of every night. I take 10 minutes at the end of my day before I leave the office and I go make dinner or whatever it is that I'm doing and I write a list for tomorrow. And either I write it electronically on my phone, in my calendar on my phone, or in my planner or something along those lines, but I write a list just so I can get it out of my head because quite honestly, I'm one of those people that if I don't write a list, I'll be making dinner thinking about the 30 things I gotta do I'll get into overwhelm. My anxiety will ratchet up and then I'm going to have a really poopy evening and so is everybody else. <laughs> so my way of staying organized and focused and out of overwhelm is working in the systems that work for me. So you need to find the one that works for you and then stick to it. Number four, creating successful habits, ditching the ones that don't serve you. So habits are a lot of things. We all have habits. I used to, here's a habit. I used to bite my nails. I bit my nails for over 30 years. Gross, nasty, hated it. Um, if I wasn't biting them, I was picking them, which is why I now get my nails done. If my nails are done, I don't bite them because I, I can't. I can't bite them because they're, they're, they're pretty and I don't want to screw up them being pretty. <laughs> so I don't bite them. So I invest in getting my nails done, um, you know, once every three or four weeks so that I don't have that habit. Um, when it applies to business, the same thing. I have to get rid of the habits that don't work for me and you have to get rid of the habits that don't work for you and have new habits. So as an example, if, you know, if you're trying to move your business forward and you have a nine to five job, create the habit of either getting up an hour earlier than you normally would and doing work then or working an hour after work that you normally wouldn't do and working then, or setting aside Saturday morning or Sunday morning and doing work then. So creating a habit that allows you to get the work done that you need to do. I talked about this in the five-day challenge that I just had, which was if you want it bad enough, you'll make it a priority. I had people saying, I work a nine-to-five job, I can't do a list build. I, excuse me, or I, you know, I work a nine-to-five job, I can't do this, or I have kids and I can't do that. Completely valid, guys jobs, kids, families, everything completely valid. But you and I both know that if something is important to us, we will make it happen, right? I personally have been on a weight loss journey and I don't talk about it a lot, but I've had to make adjustments to my life so that being healthy, losing weight is a priority. Whereas a year ago, I wouldn't have put that priority ahead. So now I have to prioritize exercising and I have to prioritize making sure I do things that stay healthy. Um, in terms of the business, I have to prioritize organization, uh, team, um, making sure the clients are good, all these different kinds of things. I've had to change my habits so that I'm a better, you know, a better person to work with. And, and we all have to do that. Number five, I want you to learn how to react better to bad news. So I want you to react better to bad news. So when something goes wrong in our lives or in our businesses, which it will happen if it hasn't already, and I'm sure it has, but when these things happen, how do you react? And then how do you cope? 
So as you grow your business, things are going to happen. You're going to have people who are unhappy with you who are going to ask for a refund. You might get a credit card charge back through PayPal for somebody that ordered something from you or worked with you and then is trying to get the money back for whatever reason. Or you might have people who are super um, nice to you. You start working with them and it doesn't work out. Or you, know, you might get bad news that um, something that you wanted to do, you can't. Um, you know, there was a, there was a program that I was going to create. And when I went to go buy the URL, the URL, actually the whole name was trademarked and taken. So I couldn't even name my program what I wanted to. And I had to change tact, right? There's a lot of bad news and things that are going to happen. Little things that are going to happen in your business. And I want you to learn how to react to it differently. So if you've ever done improv or if you've ever done drama, then they teach you a technique where it's, um, I don't remember the name of it anymore, but it's almost like, you say, okay, this happened and next. So yeah, it happened. So sorry, this is bad. Um, I acknowledge it and moving to the next thing. Um, and you know, if you're in drama or if you took improv and you can remember the name of this, please don't hesitate to let me know. I just remember it. Um, and I remember having to, you know, and I'm not somebody who's ever in the past taken bad news well. I have a poker face. So if I'm upset, my face would go like bright red and I can't help it. I'm, I, I, I get upset. I cry. So um, bad news affects me and I've had to learn techniques and ways to not let it totally put a halt on my progress or things that I want to do. And I want you to learn that as well. Um, number six, I want you to react better to good news. So there's a lot of people um, and then you might do this in your business that when you get good news, you're like, Oh my God, something nice has happened. And then you're waiting for the next bad thing to happen. Or you might be one of those people who gets really good news and you over, like you get really invested in it and you over celebrate and then it doesn't pan out the way you wanted it to. And then you feel kind of silly about it later. So reacting better to good news is when somebody says they're going to work with you, wait until they've actually signed their contract and deposited their first deposit with you before you celebrate. Because what really sucks is that you celebrate like, oh my God, I closed a new client. Woohoo, it's what a great day or something like that. And then that person doesn't sign and then you're feeling like crap. So reacting better to the good news still has, you know, ways for you to um, just make sure that you're not over celebrating the good and over investing in the bad. Does that make sense? Okay, number seven, I want you to create a support group. So in this list of, um, in this list of how to become more successful, how to make it easier to achieve success, one of the things you can't do without is a support group. So if you're an entrepreneur, you're going to find a lot of things with friends and family. Friends and family are not necessarily always going to understand what you're trying to do. They're not going to understand why you hold yourself up in your bedroom or your makeshift office and try and get stuff done or why you're on social media, or why you're doing live videos, or why you're doing the things that you're doing, or why would you be investing in a piece of software? They do not understand, right? Now, some people are completely, completely um, supportive. You might, have a, you, know, you might have a significant other or a spouse that is very supportive. You might have a friend that is very supportive or a family that is, but not everybody does. There's a lot of people out there who are trying to make it, and their friends and their family don't get it, it's hard for them to get it. Therefore, they're not as supportive maybe as they could be, or they question things like, how is it that you do what you do? I don't understand. Where's the money coming from? Why do you work so hard, but get so little or whatever the case is like, trust me, I've been doing this since 2012. I've, you know, I've, I've got supportive people in my life. Thank goodness for that. But I've also had the questions, you know, I've had to answer the questions of like, what do you do? And why do you do this? And why don't you get a real job or, you know, cases like that. So, I want you to create a support group and that support group can be online, okay? Even though your friends and family might be supportive, I still want you to have a support group online. Find people who are either in the same niche as you or have a friendship that you can create with them, like a personality that you really, really like. And I'd say gather three to four people that you can really trust and really like and create a little mini Facebook group with them or a joint chat or a WhatsApp group or Voxer or something where when you're feeling 
you know, when stuff's coming up or maybe you've got bad news or you've got really good news that you can talk to those people, have conversations with those people, ask advice from those people, and they can give you some support, support that you're not necessarily going to get from your friends and family because they may not just understand that. And the more successful you get, your support group is really, really important. I am very fortunate that I have a support group of my, um, you know, I have my significant other who's very supportive. I have my friends who are very supportive. Uh, my, one of my best friends online, I've never even met in person yet, but I have it, you know, like I have, I have a support network, people here physically in my life and people online. And I do have, um, you know, I have a little support group online that when stuff's happening or if I post something and I want them to get, you know, give me some love on it, I'll be like, Hey guys, I posted this. Can you go like it and share it? And they'll do that for me so that it helps me, right? And, and I really recommend that you do that. Having people that get what you're doing at the moment that you're doing it and where you are in your business is a complete godsend. Um, number eight, consume the right content and ditch everything else. Yeah, so if I was to peer into your inbox on your email and see everything that you've signed up for and all the information that you have coming in, would I look at it and think, this is all content that should be there? Are you receiving and consuming the right types of content? So one of the tasks that I recommend that you do is that you create a dummy email address and you sign up for the things that you want to keep an eye on, um, people who are in your niche or just outside your niche, things that you're interested in, and use that dummy email address to sign up for those things but do not attach that dummy email address to your phone. Okay, you can attach it to your computer and that's fine, but don't attach it to your phone. And then unsubscribe from all of that stuff on your actual email address that you normally check. I know this seems a little weird, but I'll tell you why. So I still want you to gather information. I call it swipe file. So I sign up for all sorts of stuff in my industry, around my industry, so that I can keep an eye on what's going on, learn new trends, see what people are doing, learn from good, learn from bad, all the things. But I have a dummy email address for that. It is not my main email. And everything on my main email address, I've unsubscribed to anything that is not pertinent, right? So I don't get any of the crap, any of the alerts, all of that stuff goes in my dummy email address. And the only things I look at in my real, real email are things that I need. I check my dummy email address eh, three, four times a week maybe um, because I save that information, but I don't go down the rabbit hole every time an email comes in because something is there that I got to look at, right? So I'm only consuming that content when I give it the space and the time to do it. And I don't consume all the content. So I have unsubscribed from a lot of things and I only stay subscribed to the things that I actually want to consume, the people that I'm interested in hearing from and nothing else. That way I'm a lot more focused. Okay. Number nine, <laughs> number nine, not everything is your fault. Not everything is being done to you and you're not being punished. I know that sounds funny and weird, but it is this weird um, state of being that people kind of get into sometimes. And I believe in karma, guys. I believe in the universe, you know, paying you back for things that you do. I totally do. But I don't want you to get into the habit of having that self-talk of if things aren't successful, it's because you don't deserve it. Or if XXX wasn't successful, it's because you didn't deserve for it to be successful. Or you know, it wasn't the right thing for you or whatever the case. I don't want you to go down that rabbit hole um, because again, this leads into those weird moments of self-talk, the self-sabotage, the I've never been good enough for anything, that thing that happened to me, well, this is how it's playing out and I'm getting my, you know, I'm getting my just desserts on this and I'm never going to be successful and I might as well just go, you know, bag groceries at the grocery store and call it a day right? So that self-talk is really, really important. Uh, and not doing those things, not saying that you're being punished, not saying that everything is your fault. Take responsibility for the crap that you do that's wrong. Do not take responsibility for the things that you did that are not wrong, that are not your fault. And don't be the scapegoat for people. Um, and I'm talking from experience of being saying, look, for the sake of taking, you know, keeping peace, I'll just say I'm wrong. Don't do that. That's not the way to go. 
All right, number 10. This is the last one in our list today, my friends. Um, I want you to keep moving one inch in the right direction. Every single day, one inch, 1%. What does that mean? You can, if you think about it, um, there's a movie that, um, there's a movie that I love and it's called Any Given Sunday. Um, that movie is one of my favorites for one reason. There is a speech in that movie where Al Pacino, who plays one of the main characters in the movie, is talking to, um, it's a football team, it's a football movie. And funny, because I'm not a huge football person, but the movie's got really good codes. Um, and he's talking about the fact that it's a game of inches. You know, one inch in each direction makes a big difference. And if you keep moving one inch just in the right direction, guys, 1%, then it adds up, right? So I was reading, I was listening to a podcast recently where the guy said, you know, there's no difference really in eating a hamburger today or a salad. You know, when you go look in the mirror tonight, if you had a hamburger and fries and a milkshake and stuff, your body's not going to look any different versus if you had a salad. But five years from now, if you had a hamburger, milkshake, and fries every day versus a healthier option, whatever that is, five years, you'll definitely see the difference, right? You'll, you'll see it in your body and your health and your cholesterol and all those kinds of things. So the stuff that you do today, even though it's incremental and very small and it's not very visible, in a couple of years, it adds up. The stuff that you do right now, guys, the little bit of list building, the little bit of automation, the little bit of Facebook group growth, the little bit of content creation, pays dividends later. The stuff I did 18 months ago is starting to pay off. The stuff I did six months ago, paying off. The stuff I did three months ago is starting to pay off. And that's how you have to look at things. It is a game of inches. It is 1% in the right direction every single day. It is one inch in the right direction every day. Um, and sometimes, guys, life's going to kick you on your butt and you're going to fall two inches back. But if you keep moving forward, then you'll always continue to make progress. So those, my friends, are my top ways that you can become more successful and achieve more success in your life here in the big, the big brand new beginnings of 2020. I hope this was helpful. I'm going to post the links below to the workshop that's happening on January 7th. I would love to have you join me for that. It is going to be amazing. I can't wait to have Haley Gray on there with me. And then just a hint, there's another workshop on February 18th, and that one's going to have my friend Allison Lex on there as well. And I think Haley's going to be on there too. So lots coming your way, um, and I can't wait to see you very, very soon. Thanks for being here, everybody. Take care, and have a great rest of your day.